Hey, Dale the Librarian, uh, if you need to get a hold of me for anything, if you want to forward students or anyone to me, this is my email address. I'm delighted to help. Um, word of mouth is my best marketing tool these days. Um, I'm here to talk about the Roper iPoll, something that's been asked for for years and the library has just gotten. So let me give you a brief tour if you're unfamiliar with it. It's a fun database to muck around in. If you go to databases, currently it's a featured database, but normally it'll be under the letter R. I'm going to see if I can get it loaded under the letter I for iPoll, because that's what I would look for. iPoll. Roper iPoll. Remember to be logged in to CIS Canvas or the Marriott Library off-campus access to get access to this. When you put in a search, um, you can use those fancy searches that we do um, in any of the other databases, or you can just put in a word salad. The word salad I found is less successful, um, or also called natural language searching. So I put undocumented immigrant in quotes so those words would stick together, and I did a Boolean operator, or you can do the and or the not as well, and let me show you some of the things that you can expect. I'll start with the fastest down the left-hand side, and then I'll do another search and talk about the tabs. And then lastly, I'll talk about what you can expect up top. So when I did a search on undocumented immigra immigration immigrant, you can see that it shows up in the questions. But on the facets on the side, you should know that you can narrow it down to questions, or if you wanted to, uh, download data sets or something that you could put in Excel. Um, those are um, available to sort by. Oh, it's cool. It's brought to you by Stata. Um, interview dates for some of the things that we're looking for. The earliest I found is 1980s, but there might be data sets going back earlier. You can see the countries of origin of the survey or the instrument itself. So even though we're talking about this international topic, what shows up in here is from the United States. A fun one is organizations, so you can see who is the author. Um, topics are helpful, um, and so on and so forth. As you go through this list, can you see that there are indicators of ways to download the instrument and the data itself, which is really cool. Um, oh, here's another cool thing, which I'm going to totally lose my screen, is when you go in, you can see these um, infographics, translation of the data itself. So you can just do, if you had students working on this, you could have them um, just do screen captures for presentations. Um, by the way, there's something that I, I don't show, but there's like classroom materials if you want to go into that. Um, okay, let's do another search. I want to do something about air quality. And I'll show you the tabs. Okay. Air pollution and air quality, and I'm going to show you the tabs across the top, my favorite one being trends, because it looks longitudinally across um, other instruments and it kind of throws them together, which is just like really exciting. But they're rare, so for air pollution, I only got three. So questions, we already looked at that one, and you can see that you can um, organize those by facets. Notice that when you change to studies and data sets, that the facets stay the same. So I think they're interrelated. Um, but it's just like the name of the poll and things like that. So I, I like to go in by the questions. Um, again, you can narrow by dates. Um, interview dates. Uh, this is the one that went back to like the 1980s. When I think of air pollution, I always think of the 1970s before we had catalytic converters in cars. Nonetheless, let's look at trends. Um, there is government efforts to protect air quality. This one is kind of lame because there was like no, no data on it. I mean, it just looked like no one cared about methanol. Having said that, level of worry about air pollution, this one's kind of fun. Um, so the evidence suggests um, we were worried a great deal about this in 2000. And then as time went on, we're just like, oh, I don't know, what are you going to do? So isn't this fun? But you can see all sorts of different data, ways of analyzing it, citing it, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, the eye candy is um, overwhelming for me. I really like that. It's fun to see how it like, goes back and forth, though. Um, like, Is this like the advent of marketing or um, the sustainability of electric car industry? I don't know. You get to determine the causality and the correlations. Let me go across the top. Um, membership, eh, that's kind of like, do you want to belong to the, the IPOL family? Data highlights this is my favorite tab. Let me show you three. 
Um, elections and presidents is really cool because it's pre-packaged groups of things that you could assign to students. Um, election polling, some of this shows up in US Census stuff. Presidential approval rating, <laughs> I like how it's like really bumpy. Um, so those are pretty cool, exit polls and things like that. Would that be interesting for the coming um, election year? Um, feature collections, that's okay. Health polling, that one's pretty um, um, robust. Interactive collection map, you wouldn't think, um, but this is where if you were assigning polls to students and you wanted them to represent different countries, obviously it's North America centric um, to uh, a huge bias degree, but if you wanted to go to France or any of these other places, so if there's like 570 out of Brazil. The weird thing, and this is something that I have to um, discuss um, with my colleague in Special Collections who speaks Portuguese, is this English only or could Portuguese um, things be found in here? I was hoping one could find that, but lacking Portuguese vocabulary, I'm not sure. Or if this has been translated dynamically. If you're interested in that, follow up with me and let me know. Um, so that's that was the interactive collection map. Lastly, if you wanted to go, I know mean, all of these are fun to look at, but topics at a glance, this is that general packaged um, undergraduate stuff where you just want to assign one group to defense spending, another group to this, and then you could look at CQ researcher um, and things like that and make a com combined assignment, which I'm happy to help with, by the way, if you want to organize something like that. Lastly, so the rest of these are pretty fun to go through. Like I said, there's classroom materials in here. But I found if you want to catch up or stay abreast of things that are trending, their blog is pretty good. So you can see that there's conferences to present at, um, but you can see reports that have come out um, in the context of these data, or if there's updates to ways of um, working with data and things like that. Um, it's just almost like going to a mini conference um, I would imagine myself with a cup of coffee cruising through these going, ah, so that's how that works. Um, be that as it may, this is a great one to look at. If you're interested in any more uh, information like this, um, if you go to the YouTube channel for Roper, um, they do have a lot of instructional videos that go on and on for like an hour and 30 minutes. Um, but alas, this is the end of my time. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a lovely day and week and semester.